Okay, I'm back and I'm gonna continue my Kelsey story. I left you off where they had lifelined her to Indianapolis and she was in intensive care, on life support, and in a induced coma. Now bear in mind, this was the weekend, as I told you earlier, that was my October Clubfest workshop. But my good friends, Jeff Drake, Trevor DeWitt, Jennifer Hacker, everybody else pitched in. So anyway, I do wanna tell you a little bit of a funny story. As I'm driving like a maniac up to the hospital, I, of course, are praying all the way, but when I told you when I got to the ICU, I went immediately to the nurse's station and this sweet, sweet, sweet African-American lady, which I love dearly, and we became friends. She says, because I asked her if Kelsey made it, and she says, girl, <laughs> she's got, they've got her back there. They hooking her up. She gonna be fine. You just go sit in that a waiting room and I'll come and get you, honey, when they've got her ready and stable. Now, don't you worry about it. We taking care of your baby. Well, me and this lady just immediately fell in love with each other. So, I loved her. So, anyway, Kelsey was in ICU. Well, she was actually in the hospital for four months, okay? After about 14 days, they took her off ICU and moved her to her room. Now, bear in mind, during this whole time, I'm there literally every day. I think in four months, I may have missed three days visiting her or being with her or spending the night there in the waiting room. Anyway, so um, they take her off life support. They put her in this room. And um, one night, um, David came home from work and I had my suitcase packed. And he, I was supposed to go see a play with some friends of mine. And he said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going up to see Kelsey. And he said, I thought you were going to a play. And I said, I don't know. The Lord told me I had to go see Kelsey. And he said, well, I guess if the Lord tells you to go see Kelsey, you go see Kelsey. So I did. I got up there. She was talking out of her head. She was taking water, pouring it on herself, taking her clothes off. I went to the nurse and I said, ma'am, she's in there pouring water on herself. She said, well, she did that last night. I said, well, now, do you think that's normal? I would encourage you to get the ICU doctor in here which they did, and she was so out of it. I don't know if any of you have ever had a blood gas, but it, the, apparently they're extremely painful. The uh, therapist came in and said, you might want to hold her hand. They did a blood gas on her, and she didn't even flinch. Didn't even flinch. So they moved her back into ICU again, back on life support, and... Of course, I stayed there with her. As a matter of fact, I got to be good friends with the ICU nurses, and I did a little clogging for them when they were doing, you know, not busy and stuff. I clogged a little uptown funk, and they were just laughing. But anyway, so she's back in ICU, and she wakes up, and she's like, what happened? I don't know what happened, but anyway, I just knew she was back in ICU. So, um, I, I'm trying to think where I want to stop here today, but... Um, I was with her, I stayed with her, but she had infection that had built up on one of her heart valves, okay? So, I'm going to leave you here because I'm going to start with the angiovac in Kelsey's story part two. So, just that's where I'm going to start is with the angiovac and that we were all flipped out about it. But anyway, and that's that's another God story. So I'll just tell you that. But for right now, I'm going to say peace out.